In my last video, which I will link below in case you missed it, we found inspiration on Pinterest from Shuni Atelier with this tag. And we made this tag. So here you see the comparison again. In this video, I would like to go one step further and use some of what we learned last time to create a new tag, which will ultimately help us develop our own style and become more confident in what we create. Welcome, this is Barbara from Vienna, Austria. So this time I'm taking the tag that we created in the last video for inspiration. And I'm going to start out the same way that I started this one by just taking my cardstock and making a tag. I'll make it approximately the same size. If you don't have this kind of cardstock, you can just use maybe plain white cardstock and coffee dye it or dye it in some way or use any kind of patterned cardstock that you might have, which doesn't have a lot of huge uh, bold colors, for example. So I'm just going to trim this down and then we'll cut the corners. And in case you want to know what size this is, if you want to have the same size that I'm making, although I really don't think it matters, it's in inches, three by six, or in centimeters, 7.8 times 15. Now I'm going to cut the corners again. I'm not worried about those these corners being the same as the other ones. In fact, I think I want to make them just a tiny bit smaller. Just cutting off one corner, kind of going for a 45 degree angle, flipping it over on the other side and cutting that same angle so that they are the same. You could also make yourself a template and then always use that. That works just as well. So here's the tag shape. Now on this one, if you remember, we used some spray with coffee, which I would usually, usually use for coffee dyeing my papers. Now I just sprayed it on and dried it. On this one, I want to try something else, but this is definitely an option for you if you want to do that, just coffee dye it. But I want to try to do it a little bit differently this time. So I'm taking my Vintage Photo Distress Oxide. You could also do this with Distress Ink if you have that. I'm just going to put some here, add some water, and then just dip my tag in that. And we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll do it on both sides so that both sides look similar because I don't know yet how I'm going to use this tag. It's very similar to coffee dyeing, I have a feeling. Well, this way I can afterwards pick the, the side that I like better if I do both. Okay, now I'm just going to dry that with my heat gun and see what that looks like. So I dried it and this is what we have. So it's quite nice, especially this side, I think it's quite nice and looks pretty similar to coffee dyeing if you just spray your mixture on your surface. But I want a little bit more texture. And so I want, I, I just did the same thing again. I just put this on here and then sprayed it a bit more because I just want a little more going on my tag. So I'm just gonna repeat the same process get more interest and then I'm going to dry it again. And if you don't have vintage photo, what you could also do is if you have any water soluble colors like watercolors or even Tombow markers or something like that, you could just make a mixture with water and then put that in a small spray bottle and spray that onto your surface. That would work just as well, I think. This is what it looks like after doing that twice. And I have also ironed this quickly so that I have a nice flat surface to work on. Now, of course, the more often you continue doing this or repeating this process, drying it, adding some more, drying it, adding some more, the more texture and interest you will get on your paper. But I'm happy with doing this twice. I think this is a great background to start working on. I think the sides are actually equally beautiful 
I'm not sure which one to choose. Doesn't really matter. I'll just work on this one. And then what we had here is we used some Distress Stain Daubers to add some more color in the background. So we had the tumbled glass here and here. And then I also added some, I'm not sure, was it, it was either tea dye or it was brushed corduroy. It doesn't matter. This time I want to try something else. I want to add some color with some watercolor instead. So I have here my my palette that I put together myself. This is a mixture of Van Gogh and Windsor and Newton colors. It totally doesn't matter what you use. You can use your cheap, cheap watercolors. I think it will work just as well. Maybe I'll put this on here in case I am not precise. <laughs> so I have my water here and a fluffy brush. And I wanna try maybe a little bit of different colors. I do, I think, wanna use like the yellow and tan and maybe some orange, but nothing too dark. So maybe I'll start with this like honey yellow. And I wanna try putting it in, pla in different places than we did here. So here we have it here and here. And maybe we'll just, I don't know, put some here and up, up here. Maybe even a speck down here. And then let's add some beige. I'm just trying to make this background a little bit more interesting by adding more color, different elements, and just play and experiment and, and see what comes out. Trying to blend it out a little bit. And as usual with my projects, I, I haven't tried this before. I am just turning on the camera while I'm experimenting with you because I want to show you that you can do no wrong. Just have fun and play around and you will learn whether it works out or not. You will learn by doing it. So I do want to keep it a bit wet because I do want to add some orange that will blend in a little bit. Just a touch. And I want this to just really blend with the yellow and the beige. I think that will do nicely. So again, I will let this dry and we'll see what that looks like. Once it is dry, this is what it looks like. And I think it is super yummy and, and really already looking like a very fun background to work in or to work on. <laughs> so on this one here, we have this edge here. I really like that it's very dark, but I actually want to take it one step further and darken it more. On this one, I used my espresso truffle memento ink straight from the ink pad and then I went over it with vintage photo with my foam brush. This time I'm going to use my black suit distress ink. I'm going to use it with a sponge and then I will also go over it with my distress oxide. With this black one I'm going to hold my foam brush fairly steep because I don't want it going into the tag a lot. I just want really the outer outer edge to be defined. And then I'm taking my vintage photo and I'm going to hold my brush a little bit less of an angle, more flat so that the ink goes more into the tag. So now you get the effect. You have a harsh 
black edge but you have the shading going inside with the brown and I think that's a very nice combination here I see I'm missing some black and I should do the same thing on the back side just in case that I'm not going to glue this tag into a journal but rather just to stick it in a pocket then of course we want our back side to be just as pretty as the front even if it's blank maybe for some writing space or whatever you want to add there but it needs to be just as pretty and we shouldn't neglect neglect the back side either before we continue here for example with the stamping i think that would be the next step that we need that we would do here we need to think a little bit more strategically in order to do that we we, we need to know what our focal element will be which was in this case the butterfly and we need to know where to place it in order to define where we want the background stamping done so i wanted to try as a focal point even though it's not fall <laughs> i wanted to use a mushroom because i think mushrooms are beautiful all year round i happen to have these here from a test print from my vintage mushroom clip art which i will link for you below and I think I'm going to try it with this one here. So I'm going to fussy cut this one and ink it up. And then we'll see how to best place that onto our tag. As I started fussy cutting this, I realized a smart thing to do would be to first glue it onto the same kind of cardstock you used for your tag. Because I'm thinking maybe I will actually also have it stand out from the tag like we have the butterfly here and if we just do that with copy paper that's not going to work because it's it's just too flimsy plus it will have a, a white back which we don't want so i'm going to just glue this first i'm just going to use a glue stick and now i will fussy cut this so this is the mushroom already inked up and I've already also inked up the back side in case we have any parts sticking out. Then it will also look nice from the back. But now looking at this, it kind of seems a bit small, especially if we put it on the side here. There's a bit too much empty space here for my liking. So in this case, I'm thinking, why don't we add some more mushrooms? I'm thinking either these, Or this one let me try the, the these both of these first so I'm gonna I'm actually just gonna cut these out because these I know I'm not going to have sticking out on any edges so I can just use the copy paper I just cut out the larger of the two I've already inked it up and now I can see how do I want to place this I want it a little further down like this and then maybe this one like this so this I think is better so now we can think about what kind of stamps we want in the background to just add a bit more interest but keep it in mind that maybe we will cover some more of this up with some other elements as well so I think one stamp we can always use that I've also mentioned in this one is a scripty stamp so I have this one here which is from crafty individuals I will link their website below they are based in the UK and when you order their stamps if you don't have any mounting foam be sure to add some of this to your order so that you can actually mount them because they only come uh, the the red part here so they're not mounted so you couldn't put this on an acrylic platform for example or even hold it nicely like this so that is one downside of the crafty, crafty individual stamps but on the other hand they are cheaper because of this I think it's because of this so it might still be worth your time so I'm going to use my archival ink jet black for this I want to make sure that it's an it's a permanent ink because I don't know yet what else I'm going to do and I want to make sure that I'm not going to have to worry about my ink smearing if, in case I add any more liquid things to it. So 
now let's think how do we want this maybe i want one up here but i'm just looking for partial prints i don't want the whole thing like this and then i want some down here like that i think that's enough of the scripty i think that looks great and then i'm thinking it might be fun to have some more mushrooms stamped in the background i have these here from one of the your creative studio boxes which were these and i think they're really cute i will link your creative studio in the description box as well now here i think it makes sense to first check again where are my rough mushrooms going to be so they'll be here now i can decide where and which kind of mushroom to add kind of like these here and where could we put them yeah i actually like it up here so we'll do that that is very cute i think is that enough or do we want to add an no i actually think that's enough i don't want to go overboard with my mushrooms do we need any other stamps no i actually think that is enough sometimes less is more we of course need to add a hole up here and this time i think i want to add an eyelet which i didn't do last time and then we can think about if we want to add any other metal elements and any numbers maybe like we have here or any other things here we actually also have some stenciling which could also be something embossed maybe we can do that because this is quite empty down here so let's see what we can come up with for there I want to do the embossing first and I'm going to use my black embossing powder. This is one I actually have never used before. This one came from a subscription box from the little stamp studio, I think it's called, or the little stamp store. I used to have that a long, long time ago. And with that subscription, once I got these cute little leaves here and branches, and I think maybe I will use that for this tag somehow. I will link them below as well. I'm not, I don't really remember where they are located, either UK or US, but they have really cute subscription boxes. I think they have different sizes as well, but I just got too many stamps from them. Maybe I'll show you. It's not sponsored. I just really enjoyed their stamps, but I can show you some of the other ones that I have from them. So that a lot of times they have like these whimsical ones super cute bird in a nest and a what is it a llama is it a llama it's an alpaca i think <laughs> really cute you can't choose i think i mean i don't know maybe you can even buy individual stamps but usually it's kind of a surprise what you get kind of like the your creative studio which i think is super fun okay let's see which leaves i want to use Maybe this one coming down like that for up there. And then for, I think I want something to balance it on the opposite corner, which would be here. And you know, I usually like three, but we'll see first what the two look like. And if I feel it needs something else, I can then add that. So let's do the top one. using my embossing ink try to do them at the same time and hurry before the ink dries okay so there's one and two so let's go ahead and melt this So there's the top leaf, there is the bottom little branch. So this 
embossing powder is not sparkly like this one is that I used last time for the butterfly. I didn't want sparkly for this one. I'm usually not very particular about cleaning my stamps after I use them, but with the embossing powder, I do that because, the, uh, I mean, with the embossing stamp pad, because that is a whole nother story and it's kind of gets sticky and really weird if you want to stamp with it again afterwards. So I would advise to do that. Baby wipe is perfect for that. Next, let's make the hole on top. So for this, I'm going to use my crop dial. Try to center that and choose an eyelet. I wish I had one of the dark brass ones. I don't think, oh, 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 I think I have one. These are so hard to find. This, I don't remember where I got mine from, otherwise I would just reorder them. Okay, that looks great. Okay, let's see again about our placement of the mushrooms and we can see what else we need. I do love the thought of adding some and uh, adding like another metal element but i don't want to add that like here or here i want to do something differently so i think what i want to do is maybe add something dangling from from the hole here like maybe we could do a charm and maybe even another small tag because i think that might be really fun so i could just take another of the same cardstock and then I will just cut that down maybe first I should decide what I want to put on the tag before I cut it I want to maybe go back to my mushroom stamps to stay with the mushroom theme this one here is the smallest one I have so let's stamp that I'm again going to use my Jet Black Archival Ink. Actually, what I should do is I should stain this first because obviously we don't want it to look this neat and new as here. Okay, let me cut the shape or the size I want. So now I kind of know how wide it needs to be, at least approximately can still cut it down further yeah this will fit and what do we do should we just add some more watercolor maybe or we could even just just to make it quicker I'm just gonna add some distress stain but you could do the same thing with watercolor just gonna do this I know this makes it darker than the other one but I think that is okay just going to quickly dry this. Now I will stamp my little mushroom on it. Obviously, if you have a little tag punch, then this would be the perfect time to use that. But I know not everyone has one, so I wanted to show you the option of just making the tag by hand. Now I'm just going to cut that a little more narrow. And I'm going to also snip the corners. And this is too small <laughs> to flip over, so I'm just going to, whoops, I'm just going to wing this and hope it goes okay. Yeah, I think that is good enough, and I think it's very cute. I'm going to edge this the same way that I edged the large tag, starting with my black soot. Whoops, that was too much. It wasn't too much, it was the wrong angle. Yeah, that's okay. I'm gonna do the same on the back. Probably not actually really gonna see the back, but just in case someone decides to flip it. <laughs> then again, going in with the vintage photo, although you can actually hardly see it because the background is so dark. 
And of course we need a hole in this as well. And on this one, I'm gonna use my smaller hole because the tag is just so small. like that and so now we can attach that here and I also want to attach a charm so let me go on the hunt for a little charm so I have my box of charms here by the way how cute is this I think it's really adorable I think I was gifted this box and I really think it's so cute so what could we add don't want to really use another key. We have a key here, but let's do something else. We have live, laugh, love. Maybe a bit big. I actually have a mushroom here, but it's on a silver thingy here. So, and it's too bulky. No, that's not going to work. I have a cute little fairy charm. I think somehow fairies and mushrooms, there's something magical about that. Yep, I think I will do that. And rather than attaching this with a jump ring, I think I'm just gonna use some twine. I have this off-white twine, which I think works really well with the colors here that we have in the mushrooms. So I'm gonna use that as opposed to this packaging twine that we have here. So how do we do this? <laughs> I need to think about best course of action here. Maybe I will I think I want multiple strands. So I think I will first cut it in half and then fold those in half again. Or maybe two is enough, maybe two is enough. I think two is good. Let's cut this down a little bit. And then I'm going to take another strand. I should have done that before. Because <laughs> I want to put this strand right through, like through like that. And then I'll pull it close again. And then I will String these through. So first the tag and then the little fairy. And then we'll just tie a bow. And that will keep them in place. Cut off the two ends. And then I think it might be a good idea to add some glue just to make sure it doesn't come apart. So I'll just add some tacky glue, just a dot on the bow. And then I will also add some on the back here to make sure that this doesn't come apart because otherwise our bow will fall off as well. Just a tiny bit, this will completely disappear. Okay, so we have our topper. So I think it's time we actually glue down our mushrooms. For this, I will use, I think, my tacky glue. Next, I also want to add a quote like we have here. So let's check. I actually want to use one of my travel quotes again, which I will link for you below. They are quite small, which I like for tags. So we have, I really like this one actually. I have an insane calling to be where I'm not. <laughs> That's cute, but I'm not sure how well it's going to fit on our tag to travel is to take a journey into yourself that's quite nice wherever you go go with all your heart i do like this one a lot some of these are simply too long for a tag 
There's a few from my nature quotes that would also work because they're shorter, but I kind of really want to go with a travel quote for some reason. Maybe I will just take the wherever you go, go with all your heart. And since I don't want this block here anywhere, I just will do what I did here. I'm going to cut it up into smaller strips. And haha, this time I'm actually thinking of it before, which is a miracle because I always forget. I'm going to color this first. On this one, we, we just did it with a flat brush and a tea dye distress oxide. But this time I want something that pops a little more. So I'm going to try my Wild Honey Distress Stain. Again, if you don't have these, you can just use watercolor instead. We'll have the same effect. This is just a little bit quicker. So I'm just going to dry this and then we'll cut it up. It's cut up and inked up as well with vintage photo. So now let's see how to best place that. Maybe here in the middle where it's the most calm, I think you can see it best there. Staggered a little bit to add more interest. Yeah, I think that will be good. So I'll just adhere that with, again, with my tacky glue. trying to decide whether we should add a number but honestly I kind of like that there are a few areas in on this tag that are a little more empty so that your eye can rest it doesn't have to be completely filled up with things like here we have a place here where your eye can rest which is nice so here we have it a little more split up but I think that works just as well and I think I'm going to call this one done so what we did is we used similar techniques and used inspiration from the tag we made using inter, uh, Pinterest inspiration, but we made something completely different. And if you continue doing this, I think you will gain a lot of experience and you'll learn what works, what doesn't work. And that way you can build your confidence. And I think you'll have a lot of fun just trying new things. So don't be scared to try new things. Just have fun with it. So if you want to see more of these kind of videos, let me know. I'm happy to do them. I'm having so much fun with this. And I hope to see you back here. Please subscribe if you haven't, if you want to see more. I post currently every Tuesday and Friday. And uh, thank you so much for being here. Please give this a like if you enjoyed it. It helps me out a lot. And I love you guys. Mwah. Mwah.